Hey everyone, the name is Eric Thor, and today I'm going to talk about the biggest challenge of the individual. Aligning yourself and your own aspirations and dreams with the expectations of society and the community. So, as you come to develop a stronger sense of self, you will also notice more and more clashes with the community and the society around you. The community representing the people out there that want to love you and that want to like you and society out there that wants you to succeed and wants you to become successful. Yes, I do want to believe that society generally has good intentions for the individual. The community wants to help. And however misguided these attempts may be, the society is only trying to get you to be a part of the group. They're only trying to aid you in your project. The dilemma the self faces is that the self cannot be realized on its own it has to be realized in a society in a community we cannot realize ourselves in caves away from everyone else we are gonna have to keep realizing ourselves every day together with other people that are gonna look at us and are gonna judge us so our ideas for realization and self-realization often align heavily with what the community wants and things that we need to do through the community perhaps we want to become successful actors perhaps we want to succeed on youtube perhaps we want to become uh, famous theorists perhaps we want to be writers no matter what we are dependent on the community and the society around us to reach anywhere in this destination so what i've come to find is uh, as you keep on developing a stronger internal voice, and that is what self is, an internal voice, internal views, values, opinions, uh, ideas, things that are your own, you also face a lot of rejection from society and from the people around you, as you do. People are gonna say you're too loud, you're too much, you dress too differently, you're, too in you're interested in the wrong things, your interests are boring, what you're motivated by is impossible, what you want to accomplish is never going to happen. You're constantly going to be faced with these opinions and notions from the people around you. Other people are going to put you in a situation where you are going to feel a little bit rejected. And uh, I said these things are well-intentioned. What they feel is, uh, as a society, what other people around you feel is they must compromise to succeed, they must adjust to others' expectations to get anywhere. And I believe we go through a phase in spiral dynamics, which is almost like the teenager phase, where we develop our sense of self. But almost all of us come to a point in our 20s when we realize we have to compromise. And this compromise is not easy for a lot of people and some people perhaps never get past this stage. It's simply too difficult to compromise. It's simply too difficult to adjust. It's simply impossible to align yourself with the views of others. So you simply give up or do not try. Other people recognize that this stage is an important part in recognizing the self. We recognize that to realize ourselves, we must also be ready to step out of ourselves. We must also be ready to learn from other people. We must also be ready to take on the role of an apprentice. Uh, we have to take on the role of somebody who has his first job, who has his first uh, ever career opportunity. And we have to take on these internships. We have to take on these uh, transition times where we are forced to be in a submissive position, to learn, to adjust, to listen, to see what other people do. But hopefully, at some point, we will progress past this point, and we will get to a point where we recognize that there are things in society only we can do as individuals. We have learned from other people, we have seen how the system works, and we have recognized that even though we know all these things, even though we know it's difficult, even though we know money is important, even though we know there are rules, we know we have something we need to do. And in knowing this, we have a power to see through our own life and purpose. And perhaps that's why a lot of people only begin to truly realize themselves in their 30s or 40s. 
In your teenage years, your ideas of yourself are strong, perhaps, but you have no idea how to accomplish these dreams. You have no idea how to get there. You have no idea how to succeed. So self-realization has only been written down on the paper. It has not happened yet. It only happens later. It only happens as you've been able to go through these stages. I believe it's important to always, no matter what stage you are in, nurture a strong voice of your own. So that means you need to nurture a feeling where you can tell for yourself what is right and wrong. You need to, in every situation in life, listen to yourself. What do I think? What do I believe? What do I know? And you have to constantly recognize these things. You have to constantly go through this phase. You have to recognize that there is a difference between, between having a strong sense of self and being selfish. There is nothing wrong with being self-centered or self-oriented. But there is a problem with putting the self above other. There is a problem when you start to say that your own interests, your own values are more important than the values of other people. When your interests and what you do and who you are and your way and approach to life is better than the approach of other people. There is a problem when you take your own interests and you start feeling and rejecting other people for their interests. The difference between being self-oriented and being selfish is the selfish person only sees their own values, only sees their own interests and does not see that other people have other interests. The person who is self-oriented knows and recognizes that there are things that I love and things that I enjoy and then there are things that other people like and that other people enjoy and that those things can be different and that doesn't matter. So as an INFJ what I've came to realize as I studied MTI was being an INFJ spoke to my deep love of philosophy and search of understanding and theoretical awareness. Being an INFJ that spoke to my need to be generous and kind and to give to others. I've always had a need to help others, to do things for others, to give freely to other people and I've always got a strong sense of meaning from this, so it's been something I've done my entire life. I recognize that INFJs are people that love working towards a long-term future. We're always thinking about the longer game. Where are we going? What are we all going towards? How are we going to get there? That singular focused approach towards one idea or one kind of intellectual project. That is very NJ. I recognized as an INFJ, I love introspection and the search of awareness and understanding. I'm always trying to understand other people, how they think, how they feel, why they do what they do, their deeper intentions and their deeper motivations. And that's something I do on YouTube, that's something I do behind the scenes, that's something I do every time I meet a person. I listen, I introspect, I think, why did they say that? What made them say that? How are they feeling? What are they going through? And I search in this for understanding. These are all things that relate to myself, to who I am, to what I like, to what I enjoy. These are all things that relate to my personality type. My personality type is not what I do in each specific situation. It's what I actually genuinely like doing. It's why I, what I actually enjoy doing, what I'm actually motivated by, motivated by. And what I'm finding is a lot of people are doing things that go directly against their motivations and their interests. They are compromising their own interests and motivations for the sake of society. Doing what other people want them to do. Doing what other people find it interesting if they do. Doing things the way other people think they should do it. And in this you are rejecting your internal voice and your sense of self. And that is also the rejection of a, a very base, the very baseline of growth. Because the process of growth is when we sit and we listen to a teacher in maths and we think for ourselves critically, does this add up? Do I get this? Do I know this? Only hearing the voice of other and not the voice of self means not truly knowing, not truly understanding, not truly holding something as your own and that means it will never stick inside you will only know it when you read it when you hear other people say it and you will forget it as soon as they go, go away so as an INFJ I recognized I was an introvert and that meant I had to take more time to myself and set more boundaries 
as an INFJ, I recognized I was an intuitive and that mean, meant I had to spend more time on abstract projects and I had to find myself doing things that I was actually more interested in. I had to actually start reading more, I had to actually take time to my own interest, I have to sit down and read and write and speculate and predict the future and try to understand things long term. I had to do these things because the other things bored me, drained me, exhausted me. Going out, always being out, always being in a rush, always uh, going to parties, always being out there, all those things, they drained me. Being an INFJ, I recognized I was a feeling type and that meant I had to recognize my own emotional needs. I had to recognize my own long-term emotional goals. Who do I want to be? Who do I want to become? What kind of person do I want to be? What ethics do I want to live by? What code of conduct is important to me? Who am I? What can I learn about myself? What can I learn about other people? Who are they? What are they meant to do? What is my purpose? I had to look at all these questions because those things those things were my biggest motivation in life, the things that really drove me forward, really gave me passion, really gave me true motivation. And I had to realize I was a judging type and that I needed focus and I couldn't let myself be too distracted. I couldn't let myself be too adjusting to other people. I couldn't let myself change too much just based on what other people wanted me to be. I had to learn to develop my own focus, my own drive, my own long-term goals. And I had to ne learn to take the time to myself and to these goals. Even if they took time, even if other people said, but let's do it now. I had to say, slow down, let's think about it, let's plan it out, let's wait until it aligns with this vision I had in my head. As an INFJ, I had to also get rid of some selfish notions that, for example, people who didn't care about philosophy were stupid. I had to get rid of the idea that people who don't want to be generous and who do, don't want to give but want to focus on their own ambitions or on developing skills or other things, I had to recognize that these people were not being selfish or mean. I had to recognize that People who weren't sensitive and didn't understand weren't being insensitive or callous. They were just focused on other things. Moving forward, uh, the self recognizes... Uh, well, the primary challenge of the self in this society and in this community is that you're not rejected outwardly most of the time you're not rejected outwardly what tends to happen is you're not rejected but you are misunderstood for example as a youtuber i got comments every day i get comments every day with people telling me who i am and who they see how they see me i hear people type me differently every day i hear esfp i hear intp i hear esfj i hear enfj i hear infp i hear ENTP. I hear all kinds of types every day, different types. And I don't just hear types, I also hear descriptions of myself that are difficult to align and understand. I hear being called manipulative. I hear being called fake. I hear being called distant. I hear being called cold. I hear all kinds of things about me and I have to remember all these times how can you best respond to misunderstanding? Truth is you can't. You can just keep being you. You can think for yourself, am I really being myself? Or am I letting my mask and my personas publicly get ahead of me? Am I getting too caught up in the search for popularity? Am I getting too caught up in what other people think? Am I letting other people's intentions and needs distract me from working on myself? But no matter what, you just gotta keep on trying to be you. And I say trying because I don't think you know yourself. 
not fully, not completely. And that means some of the things you're doing are not truly you. And that means there are things you could be doing that would be more you. And I also recognize that you have to work on creating an environment where you can be yourself. I have to recognize that I'm currently working in customer service. I'm currently living in an environment where I can't enjoy the focus I want to. I can't work on the long-term goals I dream of. I can't take the time I wish to the community. I can't engage in uh, the theories and the philosophy the way I would like to. I don't have the time. I have things the society needs me to do. I have money I need to earn every month, bills I need to pay every month, rent. I have expectations, I have family, I have community, I have people around me that need me. And all of that means I have a com community and a society around me that directly stifles and stands against my inability to be myself. And every one of us has this. All of you go through this. All of you have gone through this. You've been in situations where you couldn't say what was on your mind. You couldn't be yourself. You couldn't do what you wanted to do. Because your environment didn't support you. So you gotta keep on thinking, how can I make my environment align with what I want? How can I tell my environment to give me what I need? How can I tell my friends and family to support me in what I love? And you have to keep on working together with other people and giving them what they need. And that means stopping with the bullshit. Stop telling other people how you want them to be. Stop putting other people, putting your own expectations on other people. Stop putting the pressure on other people to change and adapt to your needs and your interests. Stop with the stereotypes. Stop with the misunderstanding. Stop trying to see people in a way that only fits your own interests of them, on them. That means recognizing that you are just as subjective when you type other people as when you study yourself. What you say about other people, that says more about how you want to see other people based on what that allows you to see yourself as. We build up our sense of self by thinking we are something that nobody else is. And in doing this, we are also at risk of projecting on other people, limiting ideas and beliefs, telling them not to do what they want to do, telling them not to enjoy what they want to enjoy, because that's mine, that's what I enjoy, that's what I like. Still, I have to say, while I face a lot of misunderstanding online, and while I do hear a lot of shit, I have a loving community, I have an amazing community, a brilliant community. I have people that really do get it. I have people that really do understand what I'm trying to do and who want to do the same thing. I have people out there that get the work I'm doing against stereotypes. I have people out there that understand what I'm trying to do on a theoretical level to challenge the establishment and MTI and different traditional ideas. And I have people that agree with that and think that's awesome. I have people that get what a flow type is and how it's different from a regular personality type. And I have people that can see the difference between a mask and a, who a person really is. And I tell you, when you know this, when you know the difference, you can really start typing other people. You can really start typing other people without stereotypes. When you learn to recognize what a person truly loves to do, and you stop looking at the person for what they do or how they appear, you also start giving people something really meaningful. Because when you tell people what they love, you also make them feel understood on a deeper level than if you tell them how they appear. When you tell people how they appear, you make them feel misunderstood because this is just how I appear. But when you tell a person what they love, then you make them feel validated. Finally, somebody sees it. Finally, somebody sees through it. Finally, somebody sees who I really am. So can you learn to type on that level? Can you learn to see yourself on that level? Can you learn to raise 
and increase your own inner voice, can you learn to verify your own values and your own interests and the interests of other people and of yourself? Can we stop stereotypes? Can we stop the shallow misuse of the Myers-Briggs type indicator online? Can we stop slamming types on other people without any kind of wisdom or awareness of what's really going on? Thanks everybody for tuning in and I hope to see you all in the next video.